I started my walk 12 years ago when I was doing graffiti in the street. It was a way for me to, you know, write my name and say I exist. Allez-y tant que c'est encore mouillé. At the age of 17, JR started as a graffiti artist on the streets of Paris. After finding a camera on the subway, he began taking portraits and pasting them on walls to highlight prejudice against communities. Now 28 years old, JR is described as a global urban activist. His projects have created social awareness and involve communities in the art process. Winner of the TED Prize in 2011, which aims at changing the world through art, he has created the Inside Out Project. So Inside Out Project, you do the photos, send them to me, I'll print them for you and send it back to you switch into helping people to say they exist, basically. And we've been printing everything from New York and sending them back by mail or rolls all around the world. When they receive that print, it's a piece of paper. They'll decide if they want to make that piece of paper a political statement, an artistic statement, a way to communicate an idea. And people have cover walls, in Tunisia during the revolution. They replaced all the photos of the dictator Ben Ali by their own photos. It kind of reflects the cracks of our society. Depending on which places they're using the project and how they use it, it kind of show you the mood of the place of the country while this is happening. In one year, more than 100,000 people have participated in more than 110 countries. It's so inspiring to see people gather together, create groups, communities, and put up the statement using art to do it. And one was happening in North Dakota. The Native American wanted to show that they still exist, that they're still there fighting for their rights. I witnessed it and I was like, wow, there's such a strong story with Manhattan and the story of the Native, that I was like, you know what, when people are gonna give me walls in Manhattan, I'm gonna use your photo to enlarge them. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just enlarging one of their photos. Take us a few days to do it. The beauty of it is that there is this interaction with the High Line where the people are just walking here every day and are open to read the city and discover art, which is not the case in every corner of Manhattan, just because people are always busy going to one place to another. We're here. They always have the head up looking around, and this one, I don't think they'll be able to miss it. The interaction with the people have always been a key center in my work, just because I'm walking in the streets, and that interaction is what drives me. In all those places, like in Liberia or Brazil, or, you have a really direct interactions because the people in the street, they don't have necessarily the frame to know that uh, this is street art, that this is art, or this is contemporary art. Or, you know, they, they just don't know. They come and they really ask you straight to the point, what is the purpose of your message? And all those interesting discussions are really the key center of my work because uh, they always help me to recenter, to create projects, and if you look at all the projects on those years, they all link to each other. I went to the Middle East, where I did the face-to-face, -face, and uh, it was all that relation between how do we see the others through the media? How do we see the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And uh, we pasted photos of people doing the same job from both sides, and we pasted it in Israeli and Palestinian cities.
and uh, and it was possible and it just showed that art shows you that the limits are not always where you think they are they're sometimes a bit further and that's what we try i think a lot of my work is about trying to reach the limits <laughs>